Hello and uh, welcome to Max Runout, my uh, new YouTube channel. I'm Paul. Uh, I'm an amateur machinist and I've worked on a, a lot of different uh, kinds of projects. Uh, but recently uh, I became uh, interested in uh, some YouTube videos that I saw that had uh, people uh, recycling plastic by remelting it and molding it into, into new things. And, uh, and I was particularly fa uh, fascinated by two uh, uh, series of videos on uh, YouTube. One was by Harold Waters, uh, the amateur uh, redneck machinist, and the other was by Dave Hackins, uh, whose uh, series was called Precious Plastic. Uh, Harold's videos uh, follow his uh, adventures and uh, with uh, trying to build equipment to, uh, to mold, uh, injection mold plastic parts. And uh, he's great about showing all the steps uh, along the way, including the ones that worked and the ones that didn't. So it's easy to learn uh, from, from his channel. Uh, Dave Hankins' videos are uh, more uh, polished and, uh, uh, and show a series of machines that uh, he and his uh, associates have built and tested uh, for uh, manufacturing uh, uh, molded parts in somewhat larger quantities and uh, uh, they include uh, detailed uh, drawings, that, uh, 3D drawings that uh, you can follow to, uh, if you want to duplicate uh, what he's done. I'll include uh, links to uh, one video in each of those series and uh, if you're interested I'm sure uh, you can find the rest. Dave's are kind of scattered uh, among other uh, videos on his channel, but they're not hard to find if you look for uh, precious plastic. I decided to try to build some machines of my own uh, to, to uh, injection mold plastic, EPE in particular, and possibly uh, HD uh, ABS as well. Uh, HDPE is, uh, is uh, real common in uh, uh, milk jugs and all kinds of uh, uh, recycled pl plastics you'll find uh, you're tossing out now. And uh, But uh, ABS I was interested in because I happen to have some scraps of ABS that were left over from another project that uh, I could, uh, if I could uh, uh, grind them up into small pieces, uh, I'd, uh, I'd be able to uh, melt them and uh, recycle them as well. Um, I didn't uh, copy uh, either of the uh, machines, either Harold's or uh, 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 Dave's. I guess I'm too stubborn for that, but I uh, looked around and, uh, in the shop and I decided I'd try to build them from things I had laying around. Uh, the, uh, uh, I've, uh, as I said, I've worked on a lot of projects, so I've created a lot of junk. <laughs> and I've picked up a lot of things at swap meets and uh, uh, and uh, yeah, found objects that I was able that I, I was able to uh, uh, incorporate into what I'm doing. And uh, even though if you want, uh, are interested in building something, you may build it a little different because of what parts you have. But uh, it was interesting and, and fun to, to try to use what I had. Um, one thing I want to say is I have no previous ex experience with video, and so. Uh, I, uh, I, they're going to have to cut me some slack here. I'm sure uh, the focus is not always right on everything I've done, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, in one particular uh, video, things uh, kind of moved out of the frame. But uh, I think you'll be able to, to uh, see what I was uh, trying to get across. And uh, it's definitely harder than it looks to make these videos. It gives me a new appreciation of uh, the YouTube creators and, and what they do. The other thing is I won't be showing a lot of footage of uh, me running my uh, lathe and vertical mill, even though I use those to make a lot of parts, um, uh, for two reasons. One of them is a lot of the work was uh, already finished before I started to uh, make these videos. Uh, but the other reason is uh, uh, there are guys out there that are way, way, way better than me at machining and making machining videos. And uh, truth be told, uh, I learned uh, most of uh, what I know about machining uh, from guys like Lyle Peterson and uh, Keith Rucker and Keith Fenner and uh, Adam Booth and Randy Richards and uh, many others. And uh, 
Uh, and so if you want to learn how to uh, cut threads on a lathe or, or uh, square up a piece on the mill, you're much better off uh, getting it from the horse's mouth. <clears throat> the only things I might cover in the uh, uh, in here are some operations that are kind of unique to what I'm doing. Uh, uh, making a cutting wheel and things like that. So uh, those I might cover on the, uh, I show, show some of the machining operations, but generally I, I won't. The testing of the equipment though uh, that I show was actually done as it happened. Uh, I filmed that as it happened. And so you'll get to see uh, uh, my foibles there, but, uh, and, and some of the uh, things I did to try to improve uh, the machines that I had built. Um, as of today, um, I have not yet tried to make uh, any plastic parts. Uh, I've got the machines mostly done, mostly tested, and uh, so when I do make my first plastic part, you'll see that uh, happen in real time. That should be interesting. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, when I uh, listed my, uh, you, or my machining mentors uh, earlier, I, uh, I missed one name, and that was uh, Tom Lipton uh, at Oxtools. Uh, he is uh, videos and have been particularly helpful in uh, in helping me learn how to uh, to run these machines and make parts, etc. So sorry, Tom. Uh, and I will include uh, a link uh, to each of the names I mentioned uh, uh, in the description for this video. Uh, so now, uh, next, let's go uh, take a look at uh, the machines. The first uh, machine is the injector itself, and like uh, many of the other uh, machines that I have uh, seen on uh, YouTube, uh, it consists uh, of a uh, an injection cylinder uh, and, a, and a piston or a ram, uh, but in this case uh, it's uh, based on uh, an arbor press. Uh, an arbor press is a tool that I had uh, in my shop uh, and I had seen others uh, that were based on a hydraulic press uh, or a long lever uh, that pushed down on a piston or uh, even one that used a drill press, the press, downward pressure from a drill press uh, to press the piston. But I had an arbor press and uh, it's not a particularly expensive uh, tool so anybody that wanted to duplicate it could probably find uh, uh, a new one, uh, uh, import quality one, uh, which is plenty good for what this is required, uh, yeah, for $150 or so, and probably if you looked at swap meets or auctions or whatever, you could find one for a lot less than that. I bought mine from Grizzly uh, probably, I don't know, uh, seven or eight years ago, and I use it in my shop for general purpose uh, things, and all I got to do to get ready for this is to uh, the bolt on the, the injection molding components and take off the anvil and uh, it's ready to go. So uh, the uh, injection cylinder is uh, is down here. The piston pushes down from above uh, into the cylinder. You can see it's just outside the cylinder now, far enough out so that we could uh, add more plastic material. But the plastic material is poured into the top of the cylinder and then the piston pushes down and uh, you see at the at the bottom uh, here are two uh, sleeve heaters uh, that bring the, uh, uh, the the cylinder up to temperature and below that is a, a nozzle and uh, and the mold the, the bottom piece is the uh, is the mold and I will have uh, in future videos go over the construction of all of these things how they were put together and uh, uh, assembled and uh, I mean how they're made and assembled and then uh, on the left hand side here is uh, uh, a heater control and uh, again we'll have a video that goes over how to wire that up and uh, and uh, and connect it to the uh, heaters and, uh, and then there finally there's a cart that the, the uh, uh, Arbor press is bolted to, which uh, makes uh, has a notch in it to make space for this uh, cylinder to to drop below the level of the uh, of the arbor press. So that's how the uh, injector was built, and as I said, we'll go into detail on all the parts in uh, in future videos. 
The other machine uh, I built was a, a shredder to cut up the plastic before it uh, uh, is uh, poured into the injector. And uh, I started by uh, cutting up pieces of plastic with the scissors, but uh, it turns out that gets, uh, gets old in a hurry. And also, uh, the thicker, quarter inch thick uh, and three sixteenths inch thick uh, ABS that I wanted to use uh, was way beyond what you could do with the scissors. So I was looking for a way to to, to uh, break the plastic up into small pieces uh, to make it useful in the uh, injector, and I came up with uh, uh, this uh, arrangement. Uh, the other thing I guess that inspired me to do that was. Uh, in Dave uh, Hackham's videos, they have a, a shredder, uh, but it's uh, uh, pretty complex and uh, uh, I guess you'd say fully automatic system. There's a hopper on top and you throw the bottles in the top and the chips come out the bottom. And uh, uh, But uh, looking at the uh, comments on his videos, uh, a number of people uh, found that too uh, big or complex or expensive to build. And uh, so I was trying to find uh, a simpler scheme. Uh, so I came up with this thing. Um, it's based on a uh, uh, a uh, worm drive that uh, comes from a, uh, a garden tiller and uh, I'll describe that in a detailed video. Uh, but uh, that's the unit on the left and on the right is a, a assembly that I built that uh, has a cutter wheel and uh, you feed the plastic in from the from the front by hand and the cutter wheel uh, uh, takes little bites out of it and uh, makes it into chips and uh, it works uh, uh, quite well for uh, uh, bottles and, uh, and uh, uh, thin plastic sections and uh, it, it goes right through them like crazy but uh, the ABS it's, uh, it's, it works but it gets stuck once in a while so I'm looking to make a maybe a different cutter wheel for that to make that uh, work better on the ABS. But uh, the basic idea works really well. It uh, chops the pieces up uh, into small bits and it's much, much quicker than trying to cut it up by hand. And it, uh, it goes through the uh, necks of the bottles and the threaded parts and uh, even the heavier bottom parts of the bottles with ease. And I got some ideas for uh, even further improvements to this, but uh, we'll show those in uh, some upcoming videos. I feel like I do have to say uh, something about safety. Um, this is a, a uh, this is a strictly amateur project. Uh, it uh, represents a one-off kind of thing that I built. Anybody that thinks about duplicating this has got to uh, uh, think hard about safety. Uh, it's certainly nothing for children or uh, people without any shop experience to, to tackle. Uh, the, you could see at a glance that this uh, cutter will uh, take the end of your finger off in a heartbeat and uh, the electrical wiring that's done is, uh, and if, if the electrical testing that's done is on uh, voltages of 120 volts in the US and uh, most European countries 240 volts and that's plenty to kill you if you uh, aren't careful with that. and. Uh, the uh, injector itself uh, gets up to uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit or about 200 degrees centigrade and uh, that uh, uh, is, uh, is enough to give you really serious burns. So uh, don't tackle a project like this unless you got some experience and uh, you know you, you really need to think about working safe and, uh, and being very very careful about what you're doing. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll uh, wrap up this video, and uh, I will. Uh, uh, I'm going to be out of town for a while, but uh, I, I will uh, put up uh, future videos, uh, maybe about once a week, and uh, to uh, bring you up to date on what we've done so far. And then uh, at some point, we'll uh, be ready to uh, to try making some parts. Thanks for watching.